What's up YouTube, it's Louis here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please subscribe. Thank you for 3.2K subscribers we hit it yesterday. Let's now push for 3.3K. If you enjoyed this video, let's help it reach 100 likes to bump it up in the search results so more like-minded people like us can actually get a hold of these videos. Please share it if you can or retweet it and make sure to follow me on my Twitter because that's where I post most updates, more than YouTube. And once I've made a video on YouTube, if there's anything new to say, that's over my Twitter, Louis underscore crypto. It's also the second link under. Uh, and um, yeah, let's get into the video. So just like this area here, uh, if you haven't watched my Bitcoin videos over the last two days, I basically uh, went over two indicators over the last two days, one on the monthly time frame yesterday, another one on the weekly time frame the day before. And I showed you multiple examples like here, like here, over here over here and even over here all of these areas the bears actually took power getting rejected by the 12 ema on the daily time frame that is negative guys that is a trend continuation no moving average They're, they all are so as long as you're below the 12 here we should make a lower low did we make a lower low no well maybe we made the spike which is that 18.6k level I've been talking about on the channel for, for a good few weeks now. I was basically saying that at any moment, if the bears ever want to step in, they need to lose this low. And until then, I've been saying on Twitter, go hibernate bears. Because since this point here, the 18th of June, since the 18th of June, if you go to my, if you just type in Louis Crypto and you go on my channel to the home page of my channel, the first video that appears that just plays automatically is of uh, me calling out the 18th of June bottom with a 160k target in the future in that video. So if you want to check out that video where I basically called the bottom on that day, it's on the 18th of June, just go to my YouTube homepage and that's there. But anyway, right here, you're meant to make a lower low. Did we? No, we put in that higher low. Then we came up again, got above the 20, which is extremely bullish. Getting above the 20 is bullish. However, did we stay above? No, so that's bearish that we closed back under the 20 and that signals that the move above was a fake out. So it means that the uptrend was fake and that the uptrend is fake. The true trend is a downtrend because we closed back below this trend continuation indicator. So as long as we're below it, we should continue our trend downwards. So we went back below and obviously if we're gonna continue a trend downwards that implies downtrend and downtrend by definition means lower lows and did we go lower than this low that's my question to you guys did we go lower than this low absolutely not so the bears were in power and could actually not push us below this low even though it was bearish and bearish means lower lows and lower highs so even when it was bearish which means lower lows and lower highs you could not put lower lows and lower highs. So how is that bearish? Do you see what I mean? If it's not bearish and we're, if it is bearish, you need to make a lower low. Do we have a lower low? No. What do we have? A higher low. What is a higher low? A higher low is followed by a higher high. So we see here a higher high. So what is that? An uptrend, guys. I try and explain this to you every day, but people still don't want to listen to me. And that's fine. If you're still bearish, good on you. Good on you. But you... <sighs> The only way we can now flip bearish again, as I spoke about in yesterday's update, is we need to lose this low. Have we lost it? No. I said as long as we're above the 050, this is what I said yesterday. As long as we're above 20.2K, write it down on your notes, 20,200. As Louis said, as long as we're above 20,200, we should actually continue to the 1618. And that could mean, yeah, just bounce off the 20. We should expect a reaction from the 20. So right now I'm telling you, if we do come down to about 22.5, 22, actually 22.6K, once we come down to 22.6K, we should expect a reaction from here, at least a short-term bounce. And then of course, for us to flip bullish again, you need to break this high. So at the moment, all that's happening is a similar scenario to over here. And the reason is because we've run into the EMAs. You see, every time you run into the EMAs, you dump. Every time you run into the EMAs, you dump. Every time you run into the EMAs, you dump. Every time you run into to EMAs, you dumped. I told you about this yesterday. So all those bears now getting super excited. They need to go and break this low. 
and they need to lose this and then they need to lose this 18.6k do you see how many supports they need to lose to actually flip this bearish you need to come down and lose 18.6k are we at 18.6k are we below it no so we're not bearish do you see that you have to understand this guys all we have all i'm seeing is higher highs and higher lows and even if this is to come down i don't care it's still going to be a higher low it needs to be above this but if it's not above this we're going to come back down to down here and that needs to hold. If that doesn't hold, then yes, the data is wrong. The history of Bitcoin is completely wrong. You were right to, uh, for, for no reason, believe that this time is going to be different than, than every other last time. So this time is going to be different. And that's backed by your asshole. So do you see what I mean? What I'm telling you guys, I can show you in the history. I can prove it to you. I can show you with your eyes. Can you show me? Uh, can you show me it, like w yeah with your eyes with my eyes that there is lower lows and lower highs no you can't so just 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 go hibernate bears once you lose this low i want to join you and i'm going to tell you all guys we're bearish but until then i'm bullish you see this golden pocket here this is what's created this reversal wave this is what's made us pump up to here hold it as support and then even go and make a higher high with the wicks and even with the body see how the body closed here the body closed there so that's a higher high of the bodies the wicks closed there the wicks closed there so higher highs regardless of what you want to say regardless of what little trick you want to do to suit your agenda but um yeah we created the reverse wave and i explained this the other day so that's why i want you guys to go to those videos because they're way more in depth uh, uh, but yeah, we had this push over here, this exhaustion phase, and I told you that is why this here, this wick here is the true resistance. I kept on telling you guys, no, it's not this exact green line here. No, it's not this green line over here. It's in fact just this one over here with the, with the wick because you can see we retraced. We had this, uh, sorry, we had this uh, push down, then we retraced into the golden pocket. So if this was truly bearish, you know, if this was going with the trend, and the trend is your friend. Remember, the trend is your friend. So if the trend is in our, is our friend and we're going down and we're slowly coming up, that means we're fighting against the trend to go up. And you can see we actually were above the 618, but closed back under. You can see we got trapped in the golden pocket inside of it. So that basically means that there is a resistance here. So resistance, that means top of the market. That means from the top of the market, we should revisit support, the bottom of the market. Did we go down to support? Did we even break the low because of an actual fact? What is a Fibonacci? It's a push, exhaust into the fibs, the fib levels over here before continuation and moving this low. That's what should happen with the fibs. Whenever you do something like this, where you come back to the 618 and you break above it and you hold its support, does that become a retracement anymore? No, because a retracement is this, push, retrace, continue. A retracement is a pullback against the trend. So a retracement is against the trend. A retracement is fighting the trend. A retracement is fighting the trend. But when you break past the middle point or the golden pocket, let's just say, once you break above it and you confirm that as support, you see previously it was resistance, previously it was resistance to break the low. So now you broke above resistance, confirmed it as support. That means you're gonna go and break that high and go high. Does that look like a retracement? This does not look like a retracement. This over here is a retracement because you have come down, that's with the trend. You're finding it easier to go down, harder to go up. That is the retracement before you continue and lose that low. This over here is called a reversal wave. That's what we're seeing right now, a reversal wave over here. A fib retracement would be push, exhaust, continue like that. That's what should have happened. So that's why I keep telling you guys, the bears have had their chances. The bears were in power and while in power, which means that we were in a downtrend, we had all the things to push us in a downtrend. All your textbook notes holding the EMA as resistance, textbook note. Still, the textbook note, even though that's so likely to happen, you're holding this as resistance. Every time in the past you held it as resistance, you made a lower low. Every time you held it in the past as resistance, you made a lower low. Why on this occasion when we held it as resistance, the same as here, the same as here, because everyone's saying this is the same as this, this is the same as this, and all this BS. 
but why, if it's the same, did we not make a lower low here? Why, if it's the same, did we not make a lower low here? I'm showing you all the chances it should have. The 55, look at the last time it hit the 55, back in April. Look what happened after hitting in April. Why this time did we actually go and make a higher high? Why did we not make a lower low as it should have? Why did we not go to 14, 10K as all these people are saying? Because you didn't break the low, so all these people saying, 14, 10K, they're just talking out of their bum until you lose the low, until there's confirmation. It's never, ever, ever, ever gonna happen. So that's what we wait for on this channel, confirmation, because we're unbiased. We don't just wait for breakouts, we wanna see pullbacks and held as support, yeah. We just wanna see the, the, the proof in the pudding, the higher highs or the lower lows. But if you're just saying, no, I'm expecting this and there's no proof behind it, I'm just gonna always call you out. So yeah, that's why, yeah. If, you, if you're a member of this channel, you know, you know how it is over here. But yeah, just to finally conclude, as we said, we do expect uh, a pump from here, whether that's just to, to make another lower high to continue down, whatever it is, you just need to stay above this, stay above this. And main thing to keep this uptrend 100% going, you'd stay above this 18.6K low. Yes, of course, if you come down to here and you're breaking this, that's going to validate a big M pattern. We've already spoke about this today and yesterday previously. But um, yeah, for me personally, as long as you're above that wick, they can all F off the bears. And look, you're above the golden pocket. You create the reverse wave. We should have never done that. We should have dropped from here. No, you didn't. You tried and you failed again. So when you failed again, you should have gone down lower. That even fails. So the bears are just... The bears are just not there at the moment. They're just coming at resistances, which basically means that when we're in an uptrend, they should come at resistances because that's gonna be the higher low, sorry, the higher high. And then you just need to come down and make that higher low wherever it is. I'm not saying it, it's gonna be here. I'm just showing you that whenever you make a, a new high, so say there was one here, you come down, we've made a new high, it makes sense to come back down and continue basically. So. We just flipped this previous resistance now into support. If we're going to come down, we're just going to hold it as support again. That's what needs to happen for us to continue bullish. And I'll catch you guys at 27K. If after 27K, we can actually come back down. I'm not saying it's coming back down to here, but I'm telling you, if we do, and I personally like it to do this, once we come, once we hit the 1618, or it might even be a bit before one of these targets. Eventually, we're gonna have this big uh, dip, which might last a month or so, but we need to hold, obviously, these lows over here. I'm gonna keep saying 18.6K, 18.6K. I'm gonna annoy the F out of you because that's all trading is. If you guys think it's exciting, it's absolutely not. This is meant to be boring. If you still got excitement in trading, in crypto and whatnot, then you, you haven't controlled your emotions as of yet. So this should not even be exciting. It should actually be quite boring. Uh, yeah, systematic, you know what I mean? Like robots we should be. So that's why I'm completely unbiased on the channel. I'll tell you if we're bullish, I'll tell you if you're bearish, because over time, this is what I've realized, you, that needs to be done. And this is what I teach in the mentorship and in the course. I only have two spaces left for the mentorship. The course is free for like open, like, yeah. You can buy that whenever you want. And um, the mentorship only got two slots. Two people did message me yesterday. So if you really were interested, please, uh, if you're not one of those two people, please get to me ASAP and yeah, it's booking your slots is first come first serve. And once those two slots are done, I won't be able to teach for over a month. Thank you guys.